everybody, I'm going to give you a few tips on how to study the Bible. I remember when I first uh, was learning to read the Bible, it seemed so confusing. And at times I'm like, I just felt so stuck. I knew the Holy Spirit will begin to teach me and reveal things to me as I continue to go on. But I had to also do something myself. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So I realized that I had to study and dissect the word to get a clear understanding. So when reading the Bible, tip number one, don't ever just read a verse. I know. <laughs> I know you're probably like, what? Don't read a verse. All scripture is true, but don't just read a verse. Because if you read a verse, you can most likely take that verse out of context. It is so important to understand what's going on. Number two relates to number one, read in context. I know a lot of time it could be so easy for us to grab a verse and run with it, but most of the time you have to read it in context and you have to read the whole chapter to get an idea and a clear view of what's going on. Then there's often times where you might have to read the whole book or that whole letter to get a clearer picture and the full story of what's going on. For example, Jeremiah 29 and 11 reads, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. So that's a, a familiar passage of scripture, and I know people love that passage of scripture. So do I. But we have to understand and read it in context. That passage of scripture was not specifically to us. That passage of scripture God gave to Jeremiah to tell the, the, the children of Israel to encourage them that he didn't forget about them and that he know his thoughts towards them. Because during this time, Israel was in captivity in Babylon. So God gave uh, Jeremiah that word for Israel. And what happened was there was some lying prophets saying, oh, well, you, you guys are about to be released soon. You guys are coming out soon. And God said, no, 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 no. They're gonna be in there another 70 years. So we have to be very careful to read scripture in context. Let me give you another example. Jeremiah 44 and 11, let's read that. Therefore, thus said the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will set my face against you for evil and to cut off all Judah. Now, if Jeremiah 29 and 11 was for us, then wouldn't Jeremiah 44 and 11 be as well? So we have to be mindful and understand who God, who God was speaking to and what was the purpose, what was going on. That leads us to tip number three. Take the who, what, when, where, why approach. Many of us, I'm quite sure, learned this in, in elementary school. They always told you when you're reading a story, take the who, what, when, where, why approach. And we should do the same when we're studying the Bible. Who was God talking to? Who was he speaking to? What is he saying? When, at what point in time, what dispensation? Was this under the law? Was this under grace? What time? Where? What region these people were in? Um, and why? Why was this book written? Why did God um, give this word? Why did Paul write this letter? So we have to take that approach so that we'll get a clearer understanding and we'll also get the full picture and not just part of the story. Number four, <laughs> don't take one example as a general rule. Don't take one example. For, for example, when God told Moses to split the sea, stick his rod and split the sea, that was for Moses to do at that time for whatever reason God had in mind. It doesn't mean for us to take a ride, go to the sea and think we should split it and say, well, God, you did it for Moses. You got to do it for me. No, that's not the way it works, beloved. We can't take one scenario and make it a general rule in all situations. Say, for example, if someone said you should drink milk every morning for breakfast, what about someone who's lactose intolerant? That wouldn't be beneficial for them. Or what if someone they're learning to drive and the instructor says, always drive when the light is green. But what if there's an accident? What if the streets are blocked off? Should you still drive just because that light is green? 
No. So we have to be mindful that we can't take an isolated situation and make it a general rule. Number five, don't just read with your benefit in mind. For example, when you read in the word of God, read as Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me? I'm not just here because I want a blessing or because, you know, I just need something from you. I need something. I need something. You got to read and study it with an understanding of what God is trying to say to you in your specific situation at that specific time. But also be mindful to read it in the full context so that you don't think something that wasn't for you, God is obligated to do for you. Number six, this is very important. If it's not true everywhere, it's not true anywhere. I know many times, especially in this day and age, we're hearing so much prosperity preaching and everybody's supposed to be wealthy. Everybody's supposed to be healed. Everybody. But no, what about other countries, people in other countries that may not be wealthy, that may not be well off, that may not be physically healed and all these other things. So if we, as, if so, if we say this is God promised to everybody, then what about them? So we have to be very mindful. If it's not true everywhere, it can't be true anywhere because God word is truth. Number seven, some of us might have to reprogram our mind. We have been taught a certain way for so long. And many times, no matter how much you now begin to read and dissect it and you, the Holy Spirit may be showing you and illuminating your mind and giving you clear revelation. And because you're so stuck on what you was taught, you're like, oh, no, I don't think so. Because my pastor or my bishop told me it was like this or my leader told me it was like that. But what is what is the scripture actually saying? What is the Holy Spirit actually saying to you? So we have to be careful that we don't take learned behavior and things that we have learned that wasn't fully studied and we use it as doctrine. We have to be very careful and mindful. That's why it is ever so important that we read in context and we get a clear revelation from the ultimate teacher, which is the Holy Spirit. So if this video has blessed you in any way, please feel free to like and subscribe to this channel. Also hit the bell notification so you'll be updated when there's a new video available. Also, if you would like to get even more creative in your Bible study, click on this video right here. I'm sure it will be a blessing to you. See you next time.